Hey guys, welcome back to this shop. So, I know that for a while I've been telling everybody that I'm putting a flathead V8 in the speedster here. But recently I came across a 1958 engine out of a Jaguar. It's a double overhead cam, straight six engine, small 2.4 liters. Um, but I think it's going to be a really nice engine for this car. It's very beautiful, very elegant when it's all polished up. So, I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to bring it down here in a second and kind of set it in the car to see what it's going to look like. It's going to need some work to get running again, uh, but it's pretty much a complete engine. The flathead was not really complete. Most of the stuff was there, but a lot of the outside stuff was kind of missing. But I'm really excited. I think this is going to be the engine that I'm going to go with, and it's going to look great in here. So, enjoy the video, and also if you guys have any tips about these engines, if you're worked with Jaguars before, any of you know stuff about them, let me know in the comments any tips I should know about. I've been doing a lot of research, but it always helps to um, have more knowledge about these kinds of things when you're trying to do things the right way. And also make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post stuff um, a lot earlier than I get to it. It takes me a while to edit the videos. Um, if you were following me on Instagram, you would have known about this engine a long time ago because <laughs> I've been trying to get a lot of work done and haven't really been editing things. But anyways, enjoy the video. Alright, so before I set this in the car, I wanted to take off the oil pan just to take a look inside to see what it looks like. Um, now there are only actually four volts holding in the oil pan and it was also loose. So I knew that someone had been inside of there and uh, messing around and when I open this up I can see that almost all of the connecting rods here, I don't know if you can see, um, are loose. These bolts aren't actually tightened. Uh, this one looks like it's pretty tight, but um, all the other ones, all the connecting rod um, bearings are loose. So, hoping that's no big deal. Probably someone was just in here um, taking it apart and then put it back together, like slap the oil pan back on, and then just put it in storage. So, we'll do more investigating on that later on. I just wanted to get a look to see what it was like inside, and it looks pretty clean. Obviously, the oil's been drained out of it, but the little oil that is left does look very clean, so hoping that's a good sign. Alright, so I got the body panels thrown on there now, and this engine fits in here really, really well, and it looks so much nicer than the flathead, in my opinion at least. Flatheads are awesome, but this is just such a beautiful, elegant engine, especially when these aluminum cam covers are all nice and polished up, and it has all these nice chrome acorn nuts on top, um, that'll be a very beautiful engine. But I just had to get it set in there to see what it's going to look like. I have it just sitting on some um, bricks right now. Um, just about where it's going to sit. I don't know exactly the angle or exactly how far back or forward it's going to be. But that's about what it's going to look like and I really like it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift this back up out of here, um, try to start disassembling it. I'm going to try to get the head off get the intake off. Um, I do want to take a closer look at the bottom end too because as I mentioned all those connecting rod bolts were loose so I want to see if there's any reason that someone had started to take this apart but then um, kind of quit halfway through. Hopefully there's no big issues inside.
All right, so the next step is to get this piece off right here. This is what this dampener mounts to on the end of the crankshaft here. It's held on by this really big nut right here. And this is kind of hard to take off because if you try to turn it, it's just going to turn the crankshaft unless your engine seized, but luckily this one isn't. So what I'm going to do for this is I have this old just scrap piece of aluminum here and I'm just going to wedge this right in not on the uh, connecting rod but on the kind of um, lobe of the crankshaft right here right next to the journal there and it should give me enough um, leverage to take this thing off All right, so I have the engine um, pretty much completely disassembled here, except for that one head stud that I couldn't get out. But here's a, the crankshaft right here. And it seems like there's a little bit of a range in terms of the condition of these bearing surfaces here. Some of them, like, like this one here or over here, seem to be really nice. They're very nice and shiny. There's no 
there's no visible scoring on there and it feels nice and smooth. Um, other ones like this one, um, they're not as shiny and I can kind of feel some, some scoring if I like run my finger side to side. Um, all the main bearings seem to be, seem to be pretty good. Um, there's no obvious damage on there, but I'll get that cleaned up eventually and be able to inspect it much closer. But right now I have the engine block here, pretty much a bare engine block. I'm going to clean this using electrolysis the same way I did a few months ago on the flathead block. So got this big drum right here. This will be filled with water. Engine block will go in there. I'll add in some um, washing soda and hook it up to a battery charger and it should melt all that um, rust and grease right off of there. Okay, so here's the setup that I have going on here. Um, engine block is stood up inside this barrel here. And then I have some pieces of rebar that just kind of circle it around there. That's what I'll hook the positive lead up to um, for running electrolysis. The negative will be hooked up to the engine block ex itself. Um, and it should clean up pretty well. Okay, so I got this set up here now. I have my battery charger right here that's set to two amps right now. And I have the positive cable hooked up to my um, surrounding electrodes here. And then the negative is hooked up to the engine block itself. And to know that it's working, you should see bubbles forming on the engine block and on these electrodes and then bubbles coming up um, from the part as well. And you can see um, there's little bubbles uh, coming up from around the block. So that means it's working properly. You can leave it in there for days. I'll probably have this in there for a few days at least. And that'll loosen up all the rust. Should loosen up all the grease too. In fact, you can already see um, little flakes of rust that are already floating to the surface. So, and I know there's gonna be people telling me that you shouldn't do this indoors because this is releasing oxygen and hydrogen gas, which can be dangerous. I really don't think that it releases enough to actually work, be something to worry about. But just in case, I'm going to take a garbage bag and kind of tape it around the top just to see how much gas I actually am collecting. I've been cooking in here for about five days now. Um, I have it disconnected right now. And I have taken this bag off a couple times throughout then just to check on it. And I really don't think there's any danger of like the gases that it's producing. I think the amount of gas it makes is so little that you don't really need to worry about it. Um, I won't be throwing matches at it while this is running either, but I think this is pretty good now, okay, so I'm going to hoist this out of here, take it outside and power wash it, and that should clean it up really nicely. Okay, well you can see here at this point I have everything nicely laid out. All the components here, all the cups with the bolts in them are labeled so I know exactly where everything will go when I try to put it back together. I have the major, all the major parts of the engine like the block, the head, the crankshaft, and the connecting rods sent out to an engine machine shop and they're going to take a look at it, decide what really needs to be done and then we can go from there. I think it's going to be a little bit more work than I anticipated because the pistons definitely seem to be worn out. A couple of the rods had spun a bearing at some point and then someone tried to put um, just standard bearings back into them. You can see the back side of this bearing is fine, but it's completely destroyed up here because it was put on a, on a spun rod. But I think that those rods will be salvageable. Um, they can recondition them and hopefully this can come back to a nice running engine that will look beautiful in that speedster. Especially once I get these aluminum cam covers here polished up, it'll be a very beautiful, elegant engine. And it should be awesome. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.